Um, I'm very tired today, but I just thought that I would do a um, video. Um, I may be crashing today. That's why I'm just so out of it. Um, today is a um, kind of a hard day for me. Um, just a reflection of like the last two days. It's um, today is October the 16th. Um, bringing back, um, old, well, old memories came to me today. And, um, oh, because me and him... We were discussing um, the holiday schedule today via email, and um, he told he like said something like to the left. He was like, um, "It's sad how the judge had to tell you to let me take Dallas to travel, or um, let me have Dallas, or." You know, he said it's sad that um, the judge had to tell you to let me see Dallas and let me go to daycare to pick her up, all of that. And, you know, he said, so this is why, you know, I cuss you out because that makes me so angry. Something like that paraphrase. But I said, um, I said, it sounds like you need anger management. If you have to cuss people out in your anger. And I started to write um, something. But, you know, I deleted it and just said, I'm not even going to let, you know, him get to me that way. But I did because I wrote an email to him and I said, look, whatever you're doing now, like I'm not phased by it um, because I know... The truth about you I know what you have done how you treated us um you even I like have an email apologizing from him to me about how cold he treated me in Dallas like and I said all of this I said you have time with your daughter now which you know is good in in retrospect because you know it's now this agreement is now basically forcing you to spend time with your daughter, but I was like, I am not fooled by what you're doing. You're spending your two days or your weekend or your overnight with her. I was like, that does not sway my mind saying, oh, you're a good father because I know <laughs> I know who you are. I said, the judge don't know. My lawyers don't know. Your family don't know. And my family don't know the true person um, that you are. I said, but I live with you. And I have heard and witnessed you um, saying you don't do the family thing. You don't want to be around kids all the time. You know, I need a break from y'all. You know, I have heard these things i have seen him not care for dallas i have seen dallas trying to get his attention and he's on the phone and he's just you know watching football or um days i've seen dallas and um the nights that you know he said that he was going to get up and didn't he said oh no like one night in particular i remember like it was yesterday and i said Dallas is up. She needs you. Um, this is your night. Oh, I know you're going to be mad at me, but I am so tired. I'm not going to do it. And it made me so angry. Because at that point, I was like, ain't nobody tired under this roof more than I am. And I have seen him do things and put himself before us and put his needs before us and saying that he ain't gonna do it Dallas has a fever at night oh let her cry like stuff like that and I, I told him I said I'm not phased or fooled by you know the time that you doing I don't know cause I'm not 
on his social media if you posting pictures now and you didn't and then then you know all this stuff oh now is oh and now I'm trying to build a relationship well yeah and lucky for her like she 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 likes him I can see that she adores her dad she adores her brother I know that for sure you know and there are times when you know she didn't want to um you know after their weekend you know she she was like oh she she didn't want to leave them I said but I'm not fooled and hopefully she don't you know, she just witnessed love from him from, from now until because the neglect was real and it was real up until June of this year. It's now October. So I'm not, I was like, I'm not fooled by all of this. I said, so, you know, me, you, and God know how you treated us. And I said, I hope. You know, you made peace with your past because you haven't, like, really apologized to me. But I'm, like, today is the day where I just reflect and I just get mad, you know. I get mad. And also, um, today I was watching The Real and, um, you know, Jeannie on The Real, she's going through a divorce as well and... She was like, and yeah, my husband told me, she said, you'll never know who someone is until they don't get what they want. She was like, I didn't know that my husband was actually going to be the person that taught me that. Like, her husband told her that, but her husband taught her that through action as well. And um, she said he got really nasty in the divorce and I believe a hundred percent you never know who a person is until they don't get what they want and them them colors are real I've gotten cussed out I've gotten pushed to the curb I have gotten attacked after attacks after attacks um, from him during this process for no particular reason. He was like, because, you know, um, you know, um, I just didn't like how you were doing with Dallas. I was like, I don't, I wasn't doing anything <laughs> with Dallas. Like he would, during the, before the temporary order, he would, you know, a day or two before he wanted her, um, I want her this weekend or, oh, I want to see her. So I was like, you have to give me a notice. Like, you're not the only person in her life. We have plans. And he know, I'm a planner. I'm like, we got plans, you know, this weekend, you know, I'll work with you, but you just can't say a day before that you want her. Like, that's not, that's not going to happen. So he would get mad at that. I guess that's what he got mad at. And he, I got like called everything, F U B, um, you know, all of that. Like very, very nasty for no reason. I have got, I, I actually got into a point where it was almost anxiety answering his calls or looking at my phone seeing that he texts me like I remember one day it was just so clear and like that week he was just picking on me for some reason like you know he told me he was like well you know um I'm getting my own and I'm keeping Dallas on insurance so you're gonna have to find insurance for the rest of 2008 Mind you, two times prior, like a, a week before he texted me that and like two weeks before he texted me that, he said that he was going to keep me on his insurance. He said, if mommy's healthy, then that takes, that helps Dallas, you know, and all of that. All of that was fake. You know, I'm going to keep you on the insurance because I care about you and you know, if mommy's healthy, then Dallas is going to be okay. And then 
when you get mad for whatever reason, that demon inside of you is talking to you, saying get mad, and then all of a sudden you flip out one day and be like, I'm keeping Dallas on the insurance, so you just gonna have to find your own insurance. And like that day, like I got the biggest knot in my stomach from like reading that, and I said, <laughs> not that I needed you, because when he asked me, he said, you know, do you want to stay on the insurance? I said, you're not obligated to keep me on. I said, that would help me. But, you know, I can go get insurance. That's no problem. He was like, no, I'm going to keep you on there. To the, to the point where he was like, well, I'm just going to kick you off. And I'm like, I can't even trust what you say. Like, your word has, like, strength. Like, your whatever you say have strings attached to it and when you don't get your way it's like that string is gone and you leave me out deserted that's how it was the whole marriage and I'm just like so like the next time like after that incident the next time he texted me said um call me um I need to talk to you I, I was I was like so shaken up because I said I don't know what's next like what he got in his bag of tricks you know, and like before, like I'm, I, I've gotten so stressed these last since June. I've lost so much. No, not since June, but since June, that's when my diet just failed. I didn't eat nothing. Like I ate like once a day or something like that. But like this whole year, really has been up and down my way and I just I want to get to a healthy weight and um like but since June like my my um weight like decline like I'm already little and then it was just like I was getting skinny and I was like Ugh. my pre-birth weight was like 130 I went to like maybe 160 150, 160 when I was pregnant. I went back down to 140 for a long time. And then now I'm like 120. And people are like, oh, you lost weight. And, you know, and I say, it's not by choice. Like, it's not by choice. It's by stress from this dude. I'm all, I'm all, I was already stressed in the marriage. And then you're going to make this part like hell. And you can't be an adult because you're not getting your way with this whole divorce thing. Because you, he told me, he said, you're never going to leave me. Because I was saying that. I was saying that in marriage. I said, you're going to wake up one day. I'm not going to be here. I'm not, I'm not going to be here. He was like, you ain't leaving. That was the attitude. You ain't leaving. You're going to be right here next year saying the same thing. Because I kept telling him, I said, I cannot keep taking this stuff from you. I can't keep, I can't keep, like, who can live like this? And his chauvinist attitude was like, you ain't going nowhere. And it's like, no, I'm not trying to prove a point. But I told you, I've warned you plenty of times. I said, you pushing me away? Like, for months. This ain't no up in the air, wake up one morning and say I'm a divorce. No, this has been happening. This is, has been happening for months. For months. And so I was like, nobody knows the true you. And they can judge all they want to, but like for months, I kept telling him that. I kept telling him, you know, I wasn't happy. Like who thrives in a relationship when you're not being, you're not being fed. You're not being like, not like you're not being filled. You can't, I saw a post today, you cannot give from a depletion, like a depleted source. Like there was nothing in me. Like you fertilize and you, and you tend to what you want to grow. Like he never, he never spoke life into me. It was always death. That's what he got. This is what, this is the product of you treating your wife bad. 
This is the product of it. And so I'm just, I'm like appalled at like, you know, people like, you know, just make sure it's not like a rash. It's not a rash decision. And if I led you to believe that I was happy, then maybe I was just doing my job. But in the inside, but behind those four walls, I told him. I said, I can't keep doing this with you. Wasn't feeding me spiritually anything. All he wanted, like, all he wanted was sex and sex would just make everything right. No, that's maybe what you want. I want more. You're not, you're living so basic. <laughs> Why do you even want a wife? If that's all you want, leave me alone. You know, and I'm like, I'm just try I'm trying to have a good man. I'm like really trying to have a good marriage. And I know marriages have up and downs, but like, nah. That wasn't mine. And so I just got to a point today. I was just thinking about like a whole bunch of, you know, stuff and what was going on. And I said, it really got, it really got me sad. And he's just, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know what voices he's listening to in his head because like, <laughs> He really thinks it's dangerous. It's dangerous for you to think like ain't nothing wrong with you. And all of this stuff is wrong with you. And everybody see it except you. So... I told him, I said, I'm not fool. Like, you can have your weekends and stuff. Yeah, the video... Uh, well, no, my phone ran out of battery so yesterday, but um, I'm I'm better today. But um, same stuff going on. So I I do hope that um, we get to a resolution soon. Um, he can you know have his weekends. Um, he can have his you know Wednesdays and. That's what the court ordered, but, you know, I told him, I said, I'm not phased by everything that you're doing right now because, um, I'm just not, so. It's going to take more than you getting, um, a court-ordered visitation. And good that you're spending more time with her than you ever did in, in, in our whole <laughs> marriage. So, um... I remember one time I was pregnant, um, and I was so excited because Dallas, be, um, this was when she, I can, I can begin, um, to feel like her kicks and her movements. I was so excited. You know, this is my first child and I'm, you know, sharing this experience with you. He, he was like, I've been there, done that. So, you know, you can have the experience by yourself. So, um, one time when we was like laying in bed and I was like oh you know um you know feel the baby kick and um it was a situation where I you know I was like well feel the baby kick I you know got you know his hand for you know him to feel it I was like you know you gonna talk to the baby run my stomach like he I don't even think he rubbed my stomach during my whole pregnancy like for real but you know that time and he was like no he said, are we going to have sex? I don't even know my... I was like, what? Who was like, like are we going to have sex? So I was like, so I have to have sex with you in order for you to feel my stomach and the baby kicking? Wow. Like, all the stuff that, you know, I experienced. But, hey... <laughs> That was, that was what I was supposed to go through. So, um, that's all that I needed to say. I didn't mean to do another video. I know that the video was just cut off yesterday. So, <sighs> until next time, folks.